Howdy folks, I appreciate you all joining me. Welcome back. So today what I'm looking at is, is the combination square. Um, it's an extremely versatile tool. Um, uh, it, it's a versatile measuring tool. Uh, it dates back to the early, early 20th century. Um, in the market, you can find extremely cheap combination squares, but they also have combination squares all the way up past a hundred dollars. And I want to answer the question today is buying a more expensive combination square worth it? Is it worth it? You know, uh, when, if you're looking into buying a combination square, you're going to be looking at options from like this is seven to $10. This right here is anywhere from 70 to $80. This is a PEC. This is a Swanson. And I even got a stare it here today. And I'm going to be unboxing this and uh, showing you guys some of the first things that I do when I get a combination square and kind of uh, go over the differences between uh, some of the cheaper options and the more expensive options. And if you stick around to the end, um, I'm going to give you what I think uh, is the best option going with the cheaper model versus a more expensive model. Uh, so stick around and uh, enjoy the video. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that you want to do when you get a combination square is is the first thing, it doesn't matter if it's a Starrett, uh, a PEC, um, or one of the cheaper, the Swansons, or the um, Johnson level, or even the Empires, you always want to make sure they're square. All right, so in making sure that uh, the combination is square, what you want to get is either um, a utility knife like this or um, a mechanical pencil with uh, a 0 0.5 millimeter lead. So you want to get the thinnest um, marking you tool that you can. So what I'm going to do is to make sure this is square is, is um, I'm going to not pull it out all the way, but I'm going to pull it out. Um, you know, get some distance on the blade. And what I'm going to do now, what's important when you do this, I'll go ahead and mention this, is making sure that you have an actual straight edge. So this is a piece of MDF. Um, I know that this is a, uh, a square edge and it's consistent all the way through. And I'll show you why that's important. So what you want to do uh, with your, your new square is you're going to put it up against your uh, straight edge and we're going to mark a line. And you can see on this board, I've marked several lines and, and that's because of over the course of having combination squares, I have, let me get that out of there. I've used this same board to test all of my combination squares. All right, so let's try this again. All right, so it doesn't matter if you start from the bottom or top, I'm just gonna go from the top on this and make our line. All right, so there's our line right here. Right here. So that is our line, okay? So now what I wanna do is, is I had the square oriented this way now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over this way opposite to the first time. And the reason why you want to do that is um, instead of trying to measure it here, you want to make sure you're measuring on, on the same edge of the blade is because whenever you switch it. So let's say if the square is like slightly canted this way, what's going to happen is, is when you draw that line, and you flip it back over this way, it's going to double that error on the line. So now that we have our primary line established, I'm gonna just take my pencil, put the lead on the mark that I just made, and I'm gonna run the square up to my pencil. Make sure it is flush. and make another line. All right, 
So what you see here now is, let me get it in focus. So it just looks like I just drew one line and that's what you wanna see. That's what you wanna see. It, that means that the blade is perfectly square. So there's no cant either way. All right, so we know that that's perfectly squared, and that's the uh, that's the Starrett. I just got this today, so that's that's straight out of the box. It's square. Now, with the cheaper uh, combination squares, what you'll find a lot of times is if they're not square, right out of the box. So um, you, you you of course you want to test using the same method, and there's other videos on YouTube on how to um, uh, square up your your combination square or how to fix it if you got it and it's out of square. But you can still use these cheaper combination squares. So there we go, made our, made our lawn and it is, made it right beside the first one. It's this right here. Sorry, it's my left hand, this one right here. All right, let's, Make sure, and I have actually tried to square this one up. All right, let's run it. Just make sure I'm on my line. All right, and let's look at that. So, up here at the top, I don't know if you can see, but it's just a tiny bit thicker up here at the top. So it's it, it, it's almost pretty much dead, dead square. And I assure you, this did not come that way. I'll show you what I did, what I had to do to get this square. And that it actually took, a, I don't know, probably took about 20 minutes to get it completely square. So whenever you're doing this uh, little test, Let's say, for instance, you know, we, we, we do our line, right? And then we flip it over and we do our next line. And I'm, I'm going to exaggerate this, but let's say it ends up looking something like this. You see where the two lines start to separate up here? So what that's telling you is, is that the blade is canted down that way. So when we look at the combination square on the inside of it, there's these two little ridges. There's one right there, that little bump right there. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's the second one. You might be able to see both of them right there. So there's these two little ridges that the blade sets on. So in order to get this thing square, you need to get you a um, a small file and you're gonna have to get in there and file those down with the with a small file. And that's exactly what I did. I took a small file to uh, file that down. Now if the blade if, if the blade is canted say down this way, that means that the back ridge is higher than the front ridge. So what you then want to do is is you want to file that the back ridge down to where it starts to become even with the front ridge and that's what will end up squaring it up. This is the first combination square I ever got and I actually still use it. I use it whenever I'm out working uh, away from home when I'm you know on a job site somewhere. I actually still use this because I was able to get this thing squared up. So that begs the question then if you can spend 10 bucks in 20 minutes on a combination square, what is the point in buying a more expensive square or even a hundred dollar square or even a seventy dollar square? Why in the world would I spend the money um, for these more expensive squares? And the answer to that is um, the quality of the, the material that's used. This uses a zinc body these use a cast iron body. Now there's some pros and cons to using the cast zinc and then the cast iron. The pro to the, the zinc is, is that it'll never, it's not gonna rust. 
The cast iron, however, will. And this PEC, as you can see, has some rust marks on it. And what you actually have to do to make sure you keep these in good condition is put like some kind of uh, corrosion inhibitor, inhibitor on it. Uh, I use paste wax and it's worked quite well, but you gotta make sure that you're applying it because whenever you're using this, you're gonna tend to rub some of it off. So this is what I would recommend. If you can't afford a higher end uh, combination square, it's perfectly okay to get a cheaper combination square. The main thing that you wanna make sure of is that it's square. If you can get it square and it takes a, it, it, it takes some takes some time. It is some uh, trial and error getting these things square. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean it's not a simple process because you know you gotta file away a little bit, check it, check it. That's what all these lines are here. It's from me trying to square up my combination squares that the cheaper ones. And then, of course, checking the more expensive ones. But you only need to do that once with these. But it, it, it is tedious. You know, have to go in, grind a little bit off, put your lines back on, grind a little bit off. So um, combination squares, in my opinion, um, in woodworking specifically, it's, it's definitely more handy than a traditional um, speed square. And um, these aren't always square to be quite honest with you they're cheap um but they're they're not always the best option and one of the reasons why is is whenever you're checking for square this only is going to reference square on the face the, with these if you have a square combination square you can reference it on the top plane you can reference it on the face it doesn't matter you can you're not just referencing on one side or the other. And then of course, you also have the option to um, describe a line, which you can with these, but you're kind of limited to where you can get your pencil in. So these are just, uh, they're, they're more versatile in my opinion. And you know, that's why I continue to use them. Um, but you know, if you, if you can get a cheap one, you, you can get it dialed in. It, it, it will work just as good as a more expensive one. You do get to a point that you do want, you know, nicer tools and you want the longevity of, you know, the what comes with these nicer tools. And that's really what you're getting into when you start to spend a little bit more money. So if this video has helped anybody out, um, you know, if you're in the market of getting a combination square, if you got a cheaper one, you know, you're trying to figure out how to square it up. I hope this video helps, um, and if it does help, if you've learned something, uh, if you don't care, give me a like and a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it, and until next time, I'll see you guys. Take care.